Hello, Amy. Please come to Isa Restaurant across from the station right away. The whole family is here waiting for you. Isa Restaurant? You mean that French restaurant place? What do you mean the whole family is waiting? Actually, I reserved the place. I even invited the family members who usually can't make it. The cost will be around $20,000, and I'll be paying with your credit card. Please hurry. With that, my husband James hung up the phone. Am I paying $20,000? That's ridiculous. I just stood there in disbelief, but honestly, I wasn't surprised. I was just shocked by how foolish my husband was. He really doesn't get it. Despite having everything under control, my husband is putting himself in a terrible situation, and I'm seriously thinking about pushing him over the edge. With that thought, I left the house. Twenty minutes later, I arrived at Isa Restaurant. James was waiting alone and greeted me with a creepy smile that didn't match the fancy restaurant. He said the relatives were already in another room, and he started talking proudly. Amy, like I said earlier, I'm going to use your credit card freely. It may seem tough, but a wife's money belongs to her husband. It's only natural for a wife to support her husband, right? You don't have any complaints, do you? I was speechless. This was unbelievable foolishness. According to James, 25 relatives had gathered, and he had booked an expensive meal that cost $800 per person. Isa Restaurant is indeed a French restaurant place, known for offering high-quality meals at reasonable prices, but my husband purposely chose the most expensive $800 option. It's like he enjoys making his wife suffer, completely unaware of the mess he's getting himself into. James seemed pretty pleased with himself in this ridiculous situation, and all I could do was laugh. A wife's wallet belongs to her husband? It's natural for a wife to support her husband? Well, you know, I stopped that a month ago. What? You stopped being a wife? You can't just quit like that. Divorce requires formal procedures, you know that, right? James, you don't understand anything. If you did, you wouldn't have reserved such an expensive place. How do you plan to pay without money? Are you planning to dine and dash? I would never do something so foolish. Let me say it again, I'm going to pay with your credit card. If you don't like it, I'll really make you stop being my wife. Right after he said that, I pulled out a document and shoved it in front of him, showing just how clueless he was. I canceled the credit card a month ago. Here's the cancellation certificate. I brought it because I knew you wouldn't believe me. The card is useless now, so I'll ask again with no money. What are you going to do? Are you planning to run away? What? I can't use your credit card? That's impossible. That cancellation certificate must be fake. After all, the credit card I took was from your purse. If it was really canceled, why would you keep it in your purse? So you're not even hiding that you took it from my purse. I left the canceled card in there because I thought you might try to steal it. You were completely tricked. Poor thing. Amy, what's with that attitude? It's not acceptable for a wife to speak to her husband like that. James thinks he's better than me so being outsmarted by someone he sees as beneath him must be unbearable. His frustration peaked, and he started raising his voice without caring who heard him. Even though we were in a corner of the restaurant, his voice carried, and the staff began to notice. The place started to buzz with whispers. Looking around, James quickly forced a smile and tried to calm things down, acting like everything was fine, but the whispers didn't stop. James's face turned red with embarrassment, but compared to what was coming, this was nothing. Soon after, my in-laws came over to me. It seems James's loud voice had reached the relatives as well. James, what are you doing? The relatives are all shocked. You're disturbing other guests too. Look, everyone is watching. I just got a little excited. It's nothing serious, so don't worry. It seemed my in-laws hadn't caught the details of our conversation and looked confused, but they didn't say anything more. James was smiling slightly, trying to smooth things over, but he was probably relieved inside that his parents-in-law had shown up. He only shows his true self to me, 
especially since he works for the company his father runs. In front of him, James always pretends to be the perfect husband. I also looked shocked, just like my in-laws, but James gave me a stern look and silently warned me, don't say anything unnecessary. I won't forgive you if you do. I could feel the pressure from him. He has always tried to scare me and control me with force. I used to be afraid and would do what he wanted, but this time I couldn't take it anymore. James inviting the relatives turned out to be the perfect chance to show everyone his true colors. I started talking to my in-laws about who was going to pay the bill. James planned to use my credit card, I explained. He took the card for my purse and reserved this restaurant without asking me. My in-laws were shocked. That credit card was actually canceled a month ago, but James doesn't know that and was planning to use it anyway. He doesn't have any money, so how does he plan to pay? Wait a minute, Amy, they said, confused. Are you saying James took your card and planned to pay for today's meal with it? James said he would cover the cost, which is about $20,000. But if what you're saying is true, was he really planning to make you pay $20,000? That's hard to believe. Could this be a misunderstanding? My in-laws were clearly upset, which is the usual reaction. Even though it sounds unbelievable, it's the truth. Trying to hide what was really happening, James started talking in a cheerful tone with a forced smile. Amy is mistaken. I plan to treat everyone at my own expense. I'll settle the bill, so don't worry. With those words, James walked over to the cashier to pay, throwing a creepy smile my way. It was obvious he didn't believe that I had really canceled the credit card, even after I showed him the cancellation certificate. After a while, James returned with a smile, and my in-laws seemed relieved that the payment had been taken care of. But I could sense James's tension. He must have been panicking inside, realizing that things were going wrong because the credit card didn't work. That was no surprise, since I had definitely canceled it. The only option left for him was to pay the $20,000 himself, but he couldn't do that. I also knew what he was hiding in that moment. I gave him a cold stare and said, tell the truth before things get worse. My words made him nervous and his face changed. After thinking for a moment, he finally admitted the truth. Sorry, dad, mom, I really couldn't make the payment. Amy's credit card was actually canceled. Is that true? Were you planning to use Amy's card to pay? His parents asked. It's a misunderstanding, he tried to explain. It's true I intended to pay today's expenses with Amy's credit card, and I had discussed this with her. I was just shocked to find out the card was already canceled. I apologize, but I'll have to ask for help to cover this myself. I promise I'll repay you. He was mixing lies with the truth, trying to find a way out of the situation with surprising boldness. Then he leaned over and whispered to me, Why did you cancel the credit card? Are you trying to embarrass me? Why? It's simple. I didn't want you to use it without my permission, I replied firmly. The real issue isn't the embarrassment. It's the fact that you are using the card without my consent. He looked at me, surprised by my bold response, and quickly said, Be quiet. Don't talk about this here. Keeping a cancelled card in your purse just causes confusion. But it seemed my in-laws had overheard our conversation and they turned to James with a stern look. James, what are you doing? You tried to use Amy's card. Taking it from her purse without permission is unacceptable. Oh, well, there were reasons James stammered, struggling to find the right words when his father pressed him. Sensing the opportunity, I decided to explain everything in detail, wanting to reveal his true nature to his parents. For the past year, James has barely been home. At first, I thought it was because he was busy with work since your company is quite large, father-in-law. But then, James started going out even on holidays and missing important dates like my birthday and our anniversary. On top of that, he began paying more attention to his appearance and started using my credit card without my permission. My in-laws exchanged worried looks, clearly sensing something was very wrong. 
I asked James if we could spend more time together as a couple and if he could stop using the credit card without asking me first. But he argued that it's natural for a wife to support her husband and didn't listen. Worse, he even threatened me with divorce and showed me a divorce form he had already signed. Divorce? My father-in-law exclaimed in surprise. Have you been making Amy suffer this much? My mother-in-law asked, raising her voice. My father-in-law stared sternly at his son, realizing that his belief in James being an ideal husband was shattered. There was still hope that James would admit his mistakes, but instead, he tried to defend himself. No, that's not it. What Amy is saying isn't true. I need to look after my appearance because I'm preparing to take over as president. The meetings I attend on weekends are networking events and seminars, all part of my job. What's wrong with using joint funds for work-related expenses? If I stop earning, my wife would suffer too, James said, trying desperately to justify his actions. My in-laws stayed quiet, perhaps finding some logic in James' explanation and hesitating to criticize him. However, I knew the truth and his excuses didn't matter. Oh, really? Can you still say it's part of your job after seeing this? I said, deciding to show more evidence to my in-laws. From my handbag, I pulled out a document that listed dates, store names, and amounts spent. What is this? They asked. This is a credit card statement. As you can see, it shows purchases of luxury items for women. Why would you buy things like that? I asked, holding up the document. James quickly tried to grab it from me, but I moved his hand away and looked at him, demanding answers. Why did you buy luxury items for women with my credit card? Cosmetics and jewelry aren't needed for your job, are they? Can you explain this? Ah, uh, those were gifts for the women at work, for their birthdays. It's important to be liked by women in business, you know. The expense was necessary, James said, sounding unsure. His explanation was confusing, but considering his position at work, there might have been some truth to it. Saying it was for birthday gifts might seem reasonable, but this time his parents didn't believe him. Whatever the reason, the fact remains you used Amy's card without permission. If it was really necessary, you should have talked it over with her. Buying luxury brands just because female colleagues asked for them doesn't seem believable. I'm sorry, I apologize for using my wife's card, James finally admitted. I promise I'll never do it again. Please forgive me, my husband pleaded, making an apologetic gesture toward me and his parents. However, my father-in-law's anger didn't fade easily. He sternly warned my husband, just because you're married doesn't mean you can use someone else's credit card without permission. And since the amount is significant, make sure to pay Amy back for the money you spent. All right, I'll refund the money, my husband said, looking downcast and appearing thoughtful, but I wasn't convinced. Did he really think I didn't know he was still hiding something? This was just the beginning of the real challenge. My husband, his parents, and I headed to the room where the other relatives were waiting. Once there, I took out my smartphone from my bag and pressed the play button. The sudden sound surprised my husband, and he stared at me in disbelief, his face quickly turning pale. The audio was a conversation between him and a woman where he was insulting me, and the woman was saying, hurry up and divorce your wife. The family members around us were shocked by what they heard. James, who is this woman? I asked. Oh. Well, um, my husband desperately searched for an excuse. His parents glared at him angrily, and the relatives were horrified by the situation. My husband was now facing another crisis right after the credit card issue, without a moment to recover. There's no hiding it anymore. You're having an affair, weren't you? I said firmly. My husband started sweating and quickly shouted, That's not true. I'm not having an affair. It was wrong of me to speak badly about you, but she's just a friend, and we were just hanging out. By the way, when did you record this? Eavesdropping is illegal. Although he admitted to insulting me, he kept denying the affair and tried to shift the focus onto me, blaming me for recording the conversation. 
but I wasn't backing down. I explained the facts so he couldn't escape. James, I've been keeping an eye on you for a while. The credit card history made the affair obvious. That's why, while you pretended to go to work, I installed a listening device in your car. A listening device in the car? That's ridiculous. As I said earlier, eavesdropping is illegal. Do you understand that? If it's to gather evidence of infidelity, it's not illegal as long as it's not used for stalking or anything similar. I responded firmly, showing that I wasn't going to back down. I was ready to do whatever it took to uncover the truth, focusing on my own well-being and finding justice in our troubled relationship. My husband fell silent, realizing he couldn't justify his actions, but he still couldn't admit the truth. Instead, he turned to his parents and relatives, saying, Everyone, please don't believe what she's saying. She's trying to trap me. I haven't been unfaithful. Sighing, I tossed a document in front of him and the relatives. What is this? He asked, looking uneasy. What do you think it is? It's a demand for compensation. As soon as I said that, my husband's face turned pale. The document was a compensation claim I had sent to his mistress. Through an investigation, it was confirmed that he was having an affair with a woman named Lely. So I went to Lily and demanded compensation from her before coming to him. You met Lily directly and demanded compensation? What were you thinking? My husband was so shocked he couldn't speak. But really, he had no right to blame me while ignoring his own mistakes. Surprised? But she told me everything. She didn't hide your wrongdoings. You were buying luxury items for her with my credit card, weren't you? The excuse about gifts for female employees was obviously a lie, it was all for her. Lily admitted everything, and because of my credit card, she agreed to pay compensation. That's why I brought this compensation claim. My husband looked up at the sky, his face full of despair. I waved the compensation claim in front of him, showing it off. Unable to hide his irritation, he raised his voice, saying, Damn, to think you planned all this without me knowing. You're truly a cunning wife. I was your wife, but that's in the past. I told you a month ago that I quit, didn't you hear? In fact, the divorce papers have already been submitted. I'm just an acquaintance now. Did you really submit the divorce papers? Why are you surprised? I simply submitted the divorce papers you waved in my face to try to trouble me. Everything was done through the proper procedures. Any complaints? But you shouldn't just file for divorce on your own. Divorcing without discussion is unreasonable. It might be unreasonable, but that doesn't change the fact that you used my credit card without permission. That's why I filed the divorce papers on my own. This matter is now settled. My husband was left speechless, clearly shocked by my actions. He hadn't expected any of this. My in-laws and other relatives, who were watching, seemed to finally realize that my story was true. Using Amy's credit card without permission and having an affair. To think we believed you two were happily married, and you were committing such betrayals, they said, their faces filled with anger. The entire family sternly reprimanded my husband. My father-in-law spoke firmly. This marks the end of our relationship as parent and child. Additionally, you are fired from the company. Fired? Just for an affair. This is too harsh. Think about it calmly, my husband protested. At that moment, a sharp snap echoed through the room. My mother-in-law had slapped my husband hard across the cheek. Tears filled her eyes, a mix of sadness, pity, and disappointment. Just an affair? You're the one who's wrong, James. You plan to hurt Amy and then just run away? Her voice was filled with anger, and my husband had nothing to say in response. All eyes in the room stared coldly at him. Mere an affair, he had said, revealing his irresponsibility. He had always proclaimed, my wife's money is mine. A wife should devote herself to her husband. Such selfish attitudes were unforgivable. For a moment, he remained silent, but then, with stubborn defiance, he slowly raised his head and declared, It doesn't matter if I'm divorced or fired. I'm going to be with Lily. What did you say? 
Everyone was shocked as my husband openly revealed his plans to marry another woman right after our divorce. He then confidently declared, I am skilled enough to work at any company without a problem. My father's company is worthless. As long as I have Lily, that's all I need. I truly love her. Marrying her is all that matters to me. My in-laws were stunned by his words. Even after being pushed into a divorce, cut off by his family, and losing his job, my husband still remained defiant. But his arrogance was about to hit a wall. You might not know this, but Lily has been seeing several other men as well, I revealed. That's a lie. Lily loves only me. You're just jealous and making this up, he shouted back, refusing to believe it. But it's the truth. She has relationships with multiple men, and you weren't the most important to her. Not the most important. Yes, you weren't that significant to her. In fact, she paid the compensation to me quickly to avoid any problems. I can't believe it. I didn't think Lily was that kind of woman. The idea that she had feelings for you was just a delusion. You were being used. By the way, the compensation she paid me was actually funded by another man she was seeing. That's a lie. There's no way Lily would deceive me. We are going to get married. Nothing you do can stop us. My husband still couldn't accept the truth, so I calmly confronted him with the reality. It's time for you to understand that you've been abandoned. Haven't you noticed that you haven't been able to reach Lily lately? Your calls and messages aren't going through, right? Now that I mentioned it, my husband hesitated. He started to realize what was happening. In short, you are no longer needed. You've been blocked. I am no longer needed. Yes, exactly. Do you understand now? There's nothing left for you. This is what happens when you deceive others. After hearing this, he collapsed to his knees and bowed his head. Please, Amy, I'm truly sorry. Please forgive me, he pleaded. It seemed he finally realized his situation. Please reconsider the divorce. Please reverse the firing, he begged, bowing repeatedly to me and his parents. But everyone had already moved away from him. It's too late for apologies now. I will demand a fair division of our property and the money you wasted using my credit card. A person like you is just a nuisance to any organization. If you think you can work somewhere else, go ahead and try it will be worthless. Please don't leave me like this. I'm reflecting on my actions. Can I have just one more chance? He continued, his voice filled with tears. He appealed to his father, but my former father-in-law, having given up on his son, ignored him and hurried out of the restaurant. His wife followed, and the relatives also began to leave, showing no further interest in my husband. Well, I'll settle the payment then, I said. What? You're paying the $20,000? He asked in disbelief. Of course, I'll bill it later, I replied with a sweet smile. He muttered something as he collapsed onto his knees. Today, because of my retaliation, became the most painful day for him. However, this story is not yet over. His ordeal will continue. After the incident, I returned to my parents' house. But for the past few days, I've been receiving numerous missed calls, all of them from my ex-husband, James. The phone is still ringing nonstop, and I know exactly why. I had been ignoring his calls on purpose, but this time, I decided to answer to deliver the final blow. Amy, you finally answered. Please help me, I'm really in trouble, James pleaded. It sounds like a tough situation. What happened? Are you trying to escape debt collectors? I asked calmly. What? How did you know that? Did someone tell you? He replied, shocked. No, I found out on my own. James, you've racked up a lot of debt, haven't you? Not only were you giving money to your mistress, but I also heard you've been paying your co-workers to do your job. Despite their refusals, you forced them by using your position as the boss's son. You used underhanded tactics to keep up appearances at the company, enjoying affairs in your free time, and took on debt just to live how you wanted. Such foolish actions. On the day, the family gathered at the fancy restaurant, when it was discovered that the credit card had been canceled. 
James had no choice but to pay the $20,000 to himself. But I knew he couldn't do it. I had already found out about his significant debt. James, this is all the result of your own actions. But you're capable, aren't you? Leaving your father's company shouldn't be a problem, right? Well, the truth is, I haven't found another job yet. All my interviews have been unsuccessful, and I'm being chased by debt collectors. It's wearing me down mentally, he confessed. That's exactly what I expected from someone who pushed their work onto others to make themselves look good. Even if you find another job, it won't last. Don't you get that? My words hit him hard, and he couldn't respond. Unless he reflects on his actions and changes his ways, he'll keep making the same mistakes over and over. If things continue like this, he'll only face more misery, even without my intervention. Amy, I truly regret everything. I should have valued you more and worked sincerely at my father's company. But I neglected all that. I'm genuinely sorry. Won't you consider starting over with me? He begged. I must say, it's impossible to try again. I believe people can change, but some actions are unforgivable. You didn't just deceive me. You deceived many others who trusted you. You need to pay the price for that. And of course, you will fully repay the property division and the money you misused. Escaping is not an option. After hearing the silence on the other end, I calmly ended the call. Ten days later, I heard more about James's recent situation from my former in-laws. As expected, he hadn't found a stable job and ended up asking his family for support. I need help because we're family. Is it okay for your son to end up like this? He pleaded desperately. It was frustrating to see him ignore and deceive his family and relatives, only to turn to them for help when he was in trouble. His self-centered behavior is something I've always noticed. James has lived comfortably because of the help and support from those around him, but I've never heard him express any gratitude. If I had seen his true nature before getting married, I would have never gone through with it. I deeply regret enduring everything alone, without asking anyone for advice. If I had reached out to my in-laws or other relatives sooner, maybe my future would have turned out differently. From now on, I'll be more honest with myself, aiming to become stronger and more determined. It's time to say goodbye to the weaker version of myself and step forward with a firm resolve into a new beginning.